As you may have garnered from the title of this video, the Earth, as far as we know, has already faced five mass extinctions, which means we shouldn't hold our breath thinking we may avoid a sixth. The question becomes not if, but when. And the answer to that could be, it's already happening. So let's dive into this by answering the questions, what are the previous mass extinctions? What are the signs? Is it human caused? What effects will it have on the Earth? And is there a way to stop it? What are the previous mass extinctions? 444 million years ago, before life took the land save for some bacteria, the Earth saw its first mass extinction called N. ordovician. The extinction event took about 86% of the species living on Earth during the Paleozoic period. Trilobites, brachiopods, corals all lost a significant amount of their animal group, but it was the graptolites that just nearly saw a total extinction. Graptolites are 2-3 to three centimeter long filter feeding animals and colony builders. The extinction was most likely due to the consequences of a short but powerful ice age. Next up was the late Devonian event that occurred about 375 million years ago. This time it was the trilobites that took the biggest hit. The trilobites were the bottom dwellers of the ocean and didn't fare so well when plants began to prosper on land. The Devonian period was a very productive time for the planet. It occurred between 416 to 359 million years ago and saw a rise in fish species, introduced the first shark ancestors, and plant life began to bloom on land outside of wetlands where it had been limited to before. Scientists estimate that deep roots being spread into the earth released nutrients into the oxygen, triggering algae blooms and sucking oxygen out of the ocean. This essentially suffocated species on the bottom of the ocean. 75% of species were lost. Moving up to about 251 million years ago, the worst mass extinction to date was the End Permian, where the Earth lost 96% of the marine species and 70% of terrestrial. The event is also referred to as the Great Dying, due to the mass amount of life it claimed. According to some scientists, it set life back about 300 million years. The cause of the extinction was likely a perfect storm of events, ranging from the eruption near Siberia, which was one of the largest known volcanic events on Earth and covered 2 million square kilometers with lava, to which a bacteria called methanogenic responded by releasing mass amounts of methane. A severe anoxic event also occurred, which is a mass absence of oxygen. Also, it was during this time that the supercontinent Pangaea was formed, which also may have played a hand as ecologically diverse and productive coastal areas shrank. And it was about 200 million years ago that we saw another loss of about 80% of the species during the end Jurassic. This event marks the transition between the Jurassic and the Jurassic periods. The extinction event took place in under 10,000 years, which sounds like a long time, but in this context, is relatively small. The event knocked out mass amounts of ocean life, wiping out 22% of marine animals. It took nearly all marine reptiles and a substantial amount of amphibians and early primitive dinosaurs. But the event did make way for the dinosaurs to dominate the planet. The cause, like most extinction events, is still being debated, though many believe it was a result of climate changes and volcanic eruptions as a result of Pangaea separating. And now for perhaps the most famous mass extinction event, the end Cretaceous, or as it's more often spoken of, the end of the dinosaurs. It was 66 million years ago when nearly 80% of all species on Earth were lost. As most of you probably already know, the theory of the extinction event was a massive meteorite hitting the Earth which led to a blanket of dust blocking the sunlight and preventing photosynthesis. The result was a long, cold food drought that heavily disrupted the food chain and resulted in chaos on Earth. If you're interested in a more in-depth description of this, my last video covered the topic of a meteor striking the Earth. The groups of dinosaurs that did manage to survive the event are the ancestors of today's birds and some reptiles such as crocodiles. So what are the signs? As you've no doubt gathered, the events are very long and drawn out, 10,000 years being a short time span. So if we are in the midst of one, how would we know? Well, fortunate for researchers, but unfortunate for everyone else, we've seen a very quick degradation of the Earth's population, faster than ever before. For instance, in just 45 years, we've seen a decline of 60% in animal population, which means, on average, animal populations are well under half the size they were in 1970. The most severe loss comes from the freshwater species populations, which have suffered an 83% decline in their population since 1970. The main causes for these losses are habitat loss and degradation, and over-exploitation. Climate change comes in fifth behind invasive species and disease, and pollution. 
The loss of biodiversity is so overwhelming that scientists have already coined the term Holocene extinction or Anthropocene, and acknowledged that it is a direct cause of human activity. A Holocene referring to the current geological epoch, also known as the age of the human race. According to the Global Assessment Report on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services in 2019, roughly 1 million species of plants and animals face extinction caused by anthropogenic impacts. Our habits on Earth have even greatly changed the diversity of species on the planet. Our livestock, meaning mainly cattle and pigs, meant mainly for consumption, represent 60% of the biomass of mammals on Earth as of 2018. Humans are a distant second at 36%, and wild animals only squeeze in at 4%. So, is it human caused? The short answer, as we've already covered in this video, is yes. Human activity is directly linked to the ongoing mass extinction. However, the specific activity is interesting and deserves some further attention. As mentioned in the previous segment, habitat loss and degradation is the leading factor in population decline among species. As humans continue to build upon land to account for population growth and continue unsustainable agricultural practices such as cattle farming, the habitats in which species can live and thrive are fast declining. A direct example from recent news is the mass forest fires in the Amazon that were caused by farmers deliberately setting fires to clear land for crops or grazing. But our farming practices go back much further than just that. In the 1930s, in American and Canadian prairies, naive farming practices nearly destroyed 100 million acres of land due to intense dust storms and severe drought. The effects of this lasted nearly a decade, and is one of the reasons for the term, the Dirty Thirties. In the oceans, overexploitation of marine life is the leading cause of population decline for species. Following these two main causes for population shrinkage is invasive species and disease. This is largely caused by European colonization, as humans brought and spread invasive species and pathogens. Pollution follows as the fourth leading cause of mass extinction. In fifth is climate change, though scientists predict this will be a fast-growing threat to species as the effects continue to bring more changes to the planet. In the coming decades, it will have a much more severe impact on the planet's many species. What effects will it have on Earth? Some of the most admired animals around the world are essentially on their last breaths. For instance, tiger populations in the wild are down over the last 50 years from 45,000 to just 3,000. And big cats in general are predicted to be gone completely in 10 to 15 years if nothing changes. Giraffes, rhinoceroses, and non-human primates are also well on their way to complete extinction. But aside from the ethical debate around preservation of wildlife, there are other ways the mass extinction may affect our world. Pollinator decline is a serious issue worldwide. Species that pollinate plants are necessary for 75% of food crops, and their populations are dwindling. As of 2019, 40% of insect species are in decline. Aside from food crops, we also risk losing timber resources and drugs sourced from tropical plants. The water cycle also heavily relies on living organisms. Professor Paul Ehrlich of Stanford University wrote a book on human impact back in 1968 titled The Population Bomb. In an interview with The Guardian on the topic, he said, The serious warning in our paper needs to be heeded because civilization depends utterly on the plants, animals, and microorganisms of Earth that supply it with essential ecosystem services ranging from crop pollination and protection to supplying food from the sea and maintaining a livable climate. If the ecosystem collapses, the world in which we thrive will change for the worse, and we can either hope that it's possible to adapt or work to change our bad habits. Is there a way to stop it? We know we humans are the ones causing the event, which can be good news in mitigating the impact. Humanity will continue to exist on this planet, so eliminating our impact altogether is impossible, but reducing the impact and effects are. One of the leading ideas comes from scientists' suggestions that we should designate 30% of the planet to protected areas by 2030 and 50% by 2050. We can also turn to more sustainable farming practices and products that would return a large portion of farmland to wildlife. As far as the ocean goes, we need to avoid fishing as much as we do and find better practices for what we do fish, as with our current methods, over 300,000 small whales, dolphins, and porpoises die from entanglements in fishing nets each year. It is important to note that climate change and the Holocene extinction are two different issues, but the former does contribute to the latter. 
With the growth of humanity, we need to adopt more efficient and sustainable ways to support our population so we will have a planet to continue to grow on. However, if you're looking for a different escape from the planet's issues, perhaps humanity jumping ship is the more attractive option. Can we terraform Mars? And are there more habitable places within our solar system? I've discussed both of these topics in previous videos, and you can check those out if you're interested. I know some of the topics discussed in this video can be somewhat controversial and even politicized, but that's not the intention of the video. I have presented facts through research which correlates to everyday observations that I'm sure most of you have made. That being said, let's discuss. How do you feel about the facts presented? Do you think humans should change our habits, or are the lost species just the unfortunate victim of human prosperity? Let me know your take in the comments below, but remember, be civil. Thanks for watching this sci fi. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, check out my previous video about how we could stop a catastrophic asteroid from hitting Earth.